theyeshiva.net. Holding Dav Zion Amad Aleph. A new shtickle here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten lines from the bottom. Latrumas Shkalim. There's two dots, you see? Dav Zion Amad Aleph, ten lines from the bottom. Latrumas Shkalim. The Gemara on the top of Dav Zion Amad Aleph, the second line actually, quoted a new Braisa. The Braith has said that the Rish Chaydesh Nissen is not only a Rish Hashanah for what we already learned, Lemelach and Luragalim, but it's also a Rish Hashanah for a few other things. Number one, the Braith has said it's Rish Hashanah L'Chadashim. That you start counting months from Nissen. And actually Rashi brings this Gemara in the Parshas Boy on the Pasek HaChoyesh Hazal Lechem Rish Chadashim Rish Nulachem L'Chad Sheh Rashi says, a that Nisan you have to call the first month, and Iyer you have to call the second month, and Sivan you have to call the third month. And then the Gemara went into a long discussion, how do we know it's Nisan, because of course in Torah you don't have the names of the month, and ultimately you learn it from Tanakh, from Nevi'im and Ksuvim, not from Chumsh. The second Rosh Hashanah of, of Nisan is Li'iburin. Liburin means for a leap year. So the Gemara says, what's the Rosh Hashanah here? You don't make a leap year in Nisan. Fakert, you have to wait till after Rosh Hashanah. You try to make it as close as possible to others so people don't forget. People around the world don't forget. So the answer is, Rosh Hashanah Liburin actually doesn't mean a Rosh Hashanah that you start. It means a Rosh Hashanah that you end. That it's actually cutoff time. I can only make a leap year. Bezdin can only make a leap year until the last day of Adr. Till Chavtes Adr, Chavtes Adr is the last day they could say, you know what? Tomorrow, if it's Rosh Chodesh, or the next day is going to be Rosh Chodesh Adr Sheni, not Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Once Adr finishes, once it's Aleph Nisan already, it's over. Why? It's Rosh Hashanah Liburin. It's already a new year, and I can't be Ma'aber the previous year. It's already Nisan. Nisan is not Adr, Nisan is Nisan. That's the Pshat Rosh Hashanah Liburin. Uh, uh, Reb Avi, you asked uh, how many people you have to have for Ibra Hashanah. So you need three, but at most it's seven. You don't need everybody. Yeah, I saw the Rambam and Kiddush HaChodesh. The Nasi has to be involved. Right. He invites. Right. He invites. So he has three. If, 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 if you need more. Yeah. Right. If you need more, you go up to seven. Okay, stop. So, uh, so that's the Hashanah Leiburim. The Gemara says, why doesn't our Mishnah bring either of them? Our Mishnah doesn't bring Rosh Hashanah L'Chadshem, because he's talking about, he's not talking about months, he's talking about years. And our Mishnah doesn't bring Yibun, because he's talking about the beginnings, not the ends. Now we come to a third Rosh Hashanah. What's the third Rosh Hashanah? The Truma Shkalem. What's Truma Shkalem? Truma Shkalem literally means, for the donations of the shekels, Truma means contributions, separations of the, of the shekels, literally lifting up, of the shekels. What pshat? The pshat in this is, how did they fund in the Beis HaMikdash all the public offerings and sacrifices? It's a big expense. Every single day you have to have minimum two sheep. Shachris, Tzomer Shal Shachar Ben Arba. Every Shabbos, you have the extra Karbanas Musaf. Every Rish Chodesh, every Yom Tif. <coughs> These are all Karbanas Tzibur. All the public karbonis of all the Yom Tov and all of the Shabbosas. How was it all funded? The answer is, there was an obligation on every single Jew to give once a year a machtes hashekel. And together, of everybody's, from everybody's machtes hashekel, that's how they would fund the karbonis. When would you give the machtes hashekel? You would give it in the month of Adr. Chazal say, Be'echad ba'adr mashmi'en al ha'shkalim. The Rishchadish Adr, they would start announcing about the shkalim. And during the month, they would collect the shkalim. When did the shkalim arrive to the Beis HaMikdash? Somewhere in other. When would they start using them? For the new karbonis? For the karbonis? When? Iyer, Siv, and Tammuz? The answer is Rishchaydish Nisim. Rishchaydish Nisim was cut off time. Till the last day of other, I was using the shkalim that I collected a year ago. From Rishchaydish Nisim, I had to buy a sheep for Rishchaydish Nisim's carbon. I already didn't use the old shkalim. And if you had leftovers... There were the halachas, what you did with the leftovers, called Meiser HaShkalem, and Mesech HaShkalem. It's a whole sugi. What did you do with the leftovers? If you, had, if you didn't have leftovers, you didn't have. 
So if you had leftovers, you used them for other things. But the new karbanis daily, weekly, and monthly came from what? From a new kupa, from a new kasa, from a new collection of shkalim. So what's your shchaydish nissen? Rosh Hashanah l'truma shkal. Frag the Gemara minala. What's the source for this? The source of machtas hashekel is a pasuk in Barshas Kisisa. It's a mitzvah on a Jew to give machtas hashekel. But what's the? That's why we give. We have a minig, right? That Amar brings. We have a minig. The kind of says to before Purim, we do something as a zecher for the machtas hashekel that the Jews used to give in other. What is the source that you start with Shchaydish Nisim with the Nush Kalim? There's no Pasuk like this. Amr Rabbi Yishiya, Amr Kran, this is a Pasuk. It's a very interesting Limut. It's a Pasuk in Parshish Pinchas, where it speaks about the Karbonus of every Rishchaydish. We say it, we say it in, in the, in the, in the Kriya Satayr of Rishchaydish. Zois Oilas Chaydish Bechachay, Lechachay Hashana. The Pasuk gives give us a summation and says, this is the Oilas, Chaydish Bechatshe. It's a whole Pasuk. When Iskayim, first he goes through the offerings of Nishchaydish, he goes, When Iskayim, Chatsi Ahin Yiel Aparsh, Lishi Sahin La Ayel, Revi Sahin La Yoyel, La Keves Yayin, Zois, Oilas, Chaydish Bechatshe, Lechatshe Hashan. This is the carbon Oila that you bring Chaydish month, Bechatshe in its month, Lechatshe Hashan to the months of the year. No, you understand here that this Pasuk is has a lot of uh, repeating the same word three times, basically. We know what a month is. You could have said, In fact, you don't even have to say it. He starts off, Go through the system. Tell me what you do. At the end, he says, By the way, if you didn't listen the first time, this is the carbon oilers. So Chazal come and say, There's three times chaydish here in the same pasuk. And they're actually saying different things. Besides telling me about the carbon of Rishchaydish, it's also telling me something else. The Torah Zok, the Torah says, Chadesh Vahave Karbin Mitrumah Chadash. You have a month where you have to do a Chiddish. What do we mean a Chiddish? You have to bring Karbonis from a new contribution, and that is how you bring the new Karbonis. In other words, Let's go back to the Pasuk. The way Rashi puts it in other Mesechtas where this Limud is brought, he says, Azoy, Zois Oilas, Chodesh Bechotche. Rashi says here, Chodesh Bechotche, Lechotche. Chotche, Yiseida, Lidrasha. You have here the extra words, Chodoshim Yiseida, Lidrasha. You have here the extra words um, of, of Chodoshim for Adrasha. Rashi, Lechotche, in, 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 in Hagaz, with Siyunim here, they have a... a in an old print of Rashi, Rashi says, Chadashim Yisaita Lidrasha. Because it's not only the word Bechatsha, it's not only the word Chadshe that's extra. It's the fact that it's repeated three times that's extra. So in the, the first, in the old print of Rashi, it says, Chadashim Yisaita. Now the word Chadashim is not here. It says, Oilas Chadash Bechatsha. Rashi means plural. A few times you have extra <coughs> words. So the Pshat is, Zeis Oilas Chadash Bechatsha Lechatsha Hashanah. That Chadash, when you have a new month, yeah, when you have a new month, bechatshay, you have to bring a truma chadasha, lechatshay hashana, in order to bring your new karbonus. So you have here three chadushim, and one of the new months, when one of the new moons is born, meaning one rosh chaydish, zayis oilas chaydish, bechatshay, have truma chadasha. You have to bring bechatshay. You have to bring new karbonus. New karbonis. In other words, the new karbonis you have to bring lechatshe from a new truma from a truma chadash. The question is, which rish chaydish? You tell me on chaydish. Which rish chaydish? Maybe rish chaydish tambos. You have to do it. Zag de gemara vegamri shana shana minisim, and you learn out agzeir shava shana shana from this ksev by nisim. It says rishin hu lachem lechatshe ashana. Here it says zayis elus chaydish bechatshe lechatshe ashana. So I learn now that which Rish Chaydish, which Chaydish, which Chidush is the time that I have to start bringing new Karbonus from Truma Chadasha. Yes. I have to do it in this. That's the time you do it. So the Shia says this is the source that Rish Chaydish Nisan is the day. Zois Eilas Chaydish Bechatshu Lechatshu Hashanah on a new month, on a Rish Chaydish, 
bring your new carbonus from your new contributions, not your old ones. If you divert as Shana, the Ksiv, we have a Pasuk in Parshas Ekev. It speaks about Eretz Yisrael. Eretz HaShe'eni HaShem HaLekecha Doyush Oysa Tomit Eni HaShem HaLekecha Ba Meireish is HaShana Vaad Acher is Shana. And we're going to see on Dav Ches, the Gemara is going to prove that Meireish is HaShana doesn't mean from Nisan. You could say Meireish is HaShana is from Nisan. It means from Tishrei. If so, Hashana could mean Tishrei. So maybe Zeus Eilas Chodesh Bechotcha Lechotcha Hashana is which Rish Chodesh? It's Rish Chodesh of Tishrei. That's when you start using the new Shkala. And for the Gemara, Gutter Shaila. The answer is if I would have no other Hashana and Chumash, I would take a go to Medesh's Hashana. But now I have a choice. I could compare Lechotcha Hashana to Rishin Hulachem Lechotcha Hashana, or I could pe- can compare Lechotcha Hashana. To Medeshis Hashan. So done in Shana Sheshi Machadosh, in Mishana Sheshi Machadosh. It's Geschmacker. It's Geschmacker to make a comparison between a year that the Torah mentions together with months to the year which, is, which, which, which it mentions together with months. Vain done in Shana Sheshi Machadosh, in Mishana Sheshi Machadosh. Meaning, it says, as I said, the Schedish Bechotche, Lechotche Hashan. So I compare it to which Pasuk? It's a year that comes from months. If I go to Medesh Hashana, all I have is just the Shana and the Shana. So the context is closer. So if I get, if I don't have a choice, I would use the Hashana that I have for Xer Shav. But when you could, the Torah, the, the rules of Xer Shav tell me, go to this Hashana. That means make it this and not Tishna. Amr Rebbe the name of Shmuel. Karbonis tzibur haboyin bechad benisin mitzvah lavi min achadosh. All the public karbonis that come from echad benisin and further, it's a mitzvah to bring from the new contributions of shkalim, not the old ones. Vim hevi min ayashim. What if you bought the karbonis from the old money? Yatsa. It doesn't disqualify the offerings. It's not like you don't have to do it. In fact, as the Rambam says in Hilchus shkalim, sometimes the shkalim are delayed. Sometimes they're delayed. What do you do? L'chatchili, you have to take it from the old ones. But even if you had the new ones and you take from the old ones, you yoytzah. Ela shechise mitzvah. Ela ma, you're missing a mitzvah. The mitzvah is, zois oilas chaydesh b'chatshay. You should bring from Truma chadasha. So you're missing that mitzvah if you take from the yashim. But it's not a psul in the carbon. The Torah doesn't make it a psul in the carbon. Ela ma, you're missing a mitzvah. Tanya nami yachim, we also have a b'raisa. Rabbi Huda, what Rabbi Huda said in the name of Shmuel is supported by Abraise, Kabana Sibra Abayim Bechad Benissin, Mitzvah Lavim in Achadosh, Vim Hevim in Ayoshin, Yatsa Lashachisim Mitzvah. The Turei Evan brings, he says, the reason is because we have a Gemara in Menachis that when it comes to Karbonis, Shana Alav HaKasav La'akev. Meaning, even though we learn from the Pesukim, they have to bring it from the Nutrimah, when it comes to Karbonis, a din that says in the Torah doesn't disqualify the carbon until the Torah says it in a Lashen that demonstrates that it's Le'ikuva. It's inevitable. Without it, it's not going to work. And the Braise continues another very interesting Allah. Yochid she'is nadav mishaloi. What happens in the middle of Nis, in the middle of year, any time of the year, an individual comes and says, I want to bring the sheep today for the carbon tamid. I have shkalim, go buy from the store. No. He brings his own nidava for a Musa, for a Shabbos. What's the Allah? So it's an individual. So it's a very interesting situation. The carbon has to be a carbon sibur. The carbon can represent me. The carbon has to represent Kalal Yisrael. Am I part of Kalal Yisrael? Yeah, but I'm not the only part of Kalal Yisrael. Sometimes people think they're the only ones. But it's not. Kalal Yisrael means every single Jew. So what's the din here? I'm Mesnad of Mishaloi. If I bring this carbon here, who's bringing the carbon? I'm bringing the carbon. The shkalim, what happens with the shkalim? You could say the same thing. It's my shekel. No. The pshat is when we brought the sh- when I brought the shekel, when they take my shekel, your shekel, your shekel, they turn it together in the kupa, everybody is giving the shkalim, yeah, as a contribution um, to the Beis HaMikdash on behalf of the entire Jewish people. So it's everybody buying the carbon from the shkalim. Even though you're only using a few shkalim, you're not using everybody's shkalim for every carbon. But the shkalim become not in a chasim of a yachid, in the common chasm of the klal, of the Beis HaMikdash. So there's not anymore my shekel, your shekel. I gave the shekel to the Beis HaMikdash. The Beis HaMikdash represents klal Yisrael. The Beis HaMikdash koift. But here I didn't do that. Here I bought my own. 
It's like the medrash kshed in the carbon is kosher or bilvach in yimsin and lutzim. But there's one condition. The condition is I have to give over the animal, the carbon, to the tzibur. I have to give it over. In other words, I cannot be at makrev for the tzibur. And this is a very important halach. I could be makrev a carbon for my friend. If you owe a carbon, I could say, you know what? I'll help you out. I'll do it for you. I'll do it. I'll buy the carbon. In other words, it's like I become your shliach. Zachin la'adam. I become your shliach. I buy your animal. I bring it to the base. Hamikdash. Gezun tehit. You will yoytze the carbon. Huh? Yeah. However, however, there's one nekuda. Here, I can't say that. I can't say, I'm bringing the carbon on behalf of everybody. Why? Because the carbon has to be representative of the klal, the whole tzibur. So therefore, what has to happen is, in other words, it has to be a carbon that's, that, that belongs to the tzibur. So the yachid has to give it over to the tzibur. What's the chiddush of this din? Yes, a person brought an animal and he gave it over to the tzibur. So the Beis HaMikdash has now a sheep, so why can't you bring it? What's the chilek of other karbonas that are shal tzibur? They also come from shkolem that came from individuals. You have the same shayla. I gave a shekel, why are you using it? The answer is because I gave it over to the tzibur. So says, this guy, when he gives a shekel, instead of giving the shekel, he gives a karbonas, yeah. he wants to part. The shekel is, is he part the partnering himself off with giving oh, the carbon yeah. instead of the shekel. Yeah, or even if he gives the shekel, he wants to bring a carbon. So he says, why is it different well, than the shekel? He gave the shekel, so there's nothing to do with this. Once right. he gave the shekel, there's nothing to do with yeah. the shekel. He just wants to give a carbon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He wants to give a carbon. So we say we take it, but there's a condition. You take the shekel, so why can't you take the animal? What's the difference? So I would say, Leichush, you have to be afraid. Maybe... He will not give it over to the tzibur yafe yafe. What's that yafe yafe? In a beautiful, beautiful way. It actually says, believe shalom, with a complete heart. In other words, he still wants a little stake in it. <laughs> you know, he wants the plaque. Yeah, Pliny Almaini is the one who brought all the karbonus musaf today of sukkahs. I want a little credit. I want a little extra credit. I'm giving it over to the tzibur. I'm not bringing my own carbon to dava. But the, the yafe yafe, the yafe yafe means that I'm ready to lose myself in the klal. Das nisht. I'm ready to be the representative of the klal, the hero of klal yisrael. But just to be an chelik of the klal, das nisht. This is a leichus zaktu or to sinisht. So therefore, don't even take it. Don't take it because people can't do it. It's a hard thing to do. It's so a very difficult thing to do. Kamash Malan, the Chiddush is, you don't have to be afraid. You can take it back once he gives it. <laughs> no, if it's Yafa Yafa, it's Yafa Yafa. <laughs> Kamash Malan, therefore, Kamash Malan, yeah, therefore, it's a Chiddush of the Brahis. So you don't have to be afraid. A Jew gives it. You he say he's a Yid, he can be Moisel at Sibur Yafa Yafa, and you could purchase the carbon as Sibur, and it's called that Klai Yisro brought a carbon. It's not called that Ploini Almoini brought a carbon as a contribution for the tzibur, but it's rather, it's rather from the hefts of the tzibur. From here you learn a yisoyed, a big yisoyed, and that is there's a difference between shutfus and tzibur. The Ramban brings it out in the beginning of Parshas Vayikra. There's something called, in, in Mishnah you have karbonus a shutfin and karbonus tzibur. Frek the Ramban, what's the difference? It's the same thing. Karbonus HaShutfin means, let's say a thousand Jews in partnership bring a carbon. It's called Karbonus HaShutfin, it's not called Karbonus Sibur. I have a hundred Shutfin, so what's the difference if it's a million people brought a carbon? Or ten thousand people brought a carbon? Or three people brought a carbon? Shutfin means, I pay, you pay, and we buy it with Shutfin. Isn't that a carbon Sibur? The Pshat is, it's a different word. Shutfin is the Pshat of few Yechidim. <laughs> Not one yachid or few yachid. Maybe a thousand yachidim. Maybe a million yachidim. But it's a million yachidim. It's like partners in a building. My, my stocks are very important. It's not pshat. I'm, I'm not here. That's the whole idea of shutfus. Shutfus means I have stocks. I have a part in it. I, it's a thousand people. Okay. So I have a small percentage. But I am present. What's a carbon sibur? A carbon sibur transcends the yachid. The sibur, huh? It's It's bitl. It's, 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 it's transcendent of the Yachid. Ah, it's also a thousand people. But it's not pshat, me, you, you, you. The tzibur represents an entity 
that transcends the individualism. It's an entity of klal. Yes, it takes a yachid to make a tzibur. But tzibur is not me, you, you. It's a transcendental mitzias. It's like a spiritual reality. And, and it, it, it goes very deep because the Rakachava has a lot of arichas about this. There's a question, is there such a mitzias in halacha? Is there such a mitzias? Is there such a thing as a transcendental nekuda of klal? Maybe there's no such a thing. Maybe there's just a million people. What makes it a klal? And he brings in, in Brachas, in Perek, uh, in, in, uh, where is it, in Perek, Zion of Brachas, in the Mishnah, there's a huge machleikas between Rabbi Yosei Aguli and Rabbi Akiva. Very interesting machleikas. If when you're doing Zimun, what's the Nusach? So when you do three people, you say, Nevarech Shechal Namishalai. Ten people, you say, Nevarech Elekeinu Shechal Namishalai. Rabbi Yosei Aguli says, if you have a hundred people, you say, Nevarech Elekeinu, Elekei Yisrael Shechal Namishalai. If you have a thousand people, you go up. If you have 10,000 people at a meal, you have to say, Nevarech Elekeinu, Elekei Yisrael, Elekei Hatzvois, Yoshev HaKruvim, Shechal Namishalai. Rabbi Akiva says, no, 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 it's just like in davening. Baruch was Hashem Amvoyrech, you say, if there's 10 yid in davening, or there's 100,000 people in the shul, there's Elbe Nusach. But they see him, Ashas of Daf Yoimi, there were 100,000 people, they didn't say, Baruch was Hashem, Lekei Yisrael, Yoshev HaKruvim, even though it was a very big mighty, a lot of people. So Rabbi Akiva says the same halacha by benching. So the Rabbi Chavad Gon says, what's the Svaras <coughs> of like us? There's a very Kevaldic of art. So according to the Yosei HaGlili, you have 10 Jews, Kevaldic. You have 100 Jews. It adds in the Hashra HaShchina. You have 1,000 Jews. You have 10,000 Jews. You have to change the Nusach. Because it's more people. Rabbi Akiva says that Sibur is not Yechidim. Sibur is a transcendental concept. Once you have 10 Jews, they go out from a gather of Yechidim and now you have a Klal. In the Klal is Nish Tzugi coming from 1,000 to 10,000 to a million. 10,000 adds more Yechidim. But in that Metzius of Tzibur, in that, so to speak, transcendental spiritual reality called the Klal, nothing was added. It was added more, more, more people. You have more people, you have more, more power, you have louder voice, you have more people benching. But that's added in terms of Yechidim. In Shutfus it would be an addition, not in Tzibur, that's what he argues. So by davening, everybody is moided. The question is if it could, you could say that by food also. If you could say that when people are eating, which is much more physical, that it also, you can have that reality. By davening, everybody says it's one nusach, baruch Hashem amvarech. This is the nekudah here, ubevatshe yimsinim l'tzibur yafe yafe, yimsinim l'tzibur yafe, that it becomes a new cheft, it becomes a cheft of the tzibur. This is already not so easy for people. So that's the chshash, so the b'raith says mechadish, that yes, you take from him the yach. We're back to our question. Why does our Tana ignore Rosh Hashanah, the Trumas Shkalem? Kivan de Katani im Hevi Yatsa Leipsikale. Since the Braisa says it's only a din lechatchila, but if you brought Karbonis from the Truma of the last year, your Yatsa so Leipsikale. So therefore, it's not a clear halacha. Leipsikale halacha means it's not an absolute Rosh Hashanah. It's Rosh Hashanah lechatchila. It's not a Rosh Hashanah b'diyevin. Meaning, if Rosh Chodesh Nisan, I didn't start new Trumas. I used from the old Truma, Alts is good. So it's not a Pesach, it's an absolute Rosh Hashanah that it's really cut off time, and if you bring a Karbir Rosh Chodesh Nisan from the old Truma, it's over, you have to go redo it. We don't say that. So therefore, it's Taka Rosh Hashanah, but it's not an absolute Rosh Hashanah, Leipsikale. Therefore, Rashi says, Leipsikale Milsa, the Lechashva Ber Rosh Hashanah. It's not an absolute thing for him that it's called a Rosh Hashanah. Yes, there's a mitzvah to do it, but if it's not Leikuva, so it's not, it's not sure by him, that what? It's a gather of Rosh Hashanah, it's Mamish, a new Mitzis that is cut off time from the old years. He doesn't mention it. The last piece of the Braissa was V'yashayim Nem L'schir is Bat. Rosh Chodesh Nisan is Rosh Hashanah for renting homes. What's Pshat? Tonu Rabbonu. Hamas Kebayis L'chaveri, if somebody rents a house to his friend, and he tells him, I'm renting you the house L'shana for a year. There's no monkey business. Moina Shnei Masa Chodesh Mayam You have to count 12 months from day to day. So if it's Purim, I rent you the house on Purim, and I say for a year, so you have it what? Next you have it till next year, Dalit Adar. Till next year, Dalit Adar, you have it. Mishana Lashana, that's how we do it. Three, twelve months day to day, the same date. Which basically represents a lunar, I should just say, a lunar year, right? A lunar year, because the months are based on the moon, as we discussed in previous year. Huh? 
date. And I'm going back to the same date. You dollar other, you dollar Shvat, you dollar Tevis, you dollar Kislev. It's all based on the moon. So it's going to be around 350. If you're going to count it in days, it's going to be approximately 354 days. Unless if, this, unless if you have, of course, two others, or Kislev and Tevis are both, Cheshvan and Kislev are both Mole. So then you have a Shana Mole. It's not 354 days, it's 355 days, right? Rebbe held by Bati Arichayim, they actually count Shnasa Chama, 365 days. By the way, there's one thing, Erebavi, you asked about Shnasa Chama. I said yesterday, the Ktoiris. Pitam Ktoiris, Hatsari Vatsipoyden, right? So what does it say? What do you do? You have to divide it to Shloish Meis, Vashishim, Vachamisha, Kaminyan, Yemaisa Chama. Everybody holds. It's interesting. One thing. The Ketoides, you have to divide in 365 portions, connect, even though you don't have 365 days in a year. Either you have a lot more, or you have a lot less, because we don't, we, we follow the moon. But nonetheless, the, and that's why there's Moiser Ketoides. The Mishnah says there's Moiser Ketoides. What do you do with that Ketoides? If it's an Ibiya, no, an Ibiya, huh? What happens to an Ibiya? Right, right, okay. Yeah, okay that's all discussed. Sana Rechza? Yeah, Sana Rechza. 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 Yeah, Sana this renting here, yeah. is there a different deal for commercial property? It speaks about a house. <coughs> what? It's a good batting. I don't know. They, they, they make a contract specifically, then there's no shayla. If he says something specific, we're talking about stam loshen b'nei adam. So if I say a year, it means a year. Vimamar, if he says loshon zu, I'm renting it for this year. Ah, what does this year mean? Even if it was also Nissen, the year is up, and you have to give back the house. I I went to, I gave it to you other. I said for this year. I didn't say for a year. I said for this year. What's this year? The year ends. Chavtes other. Nissen. The year is up. Give me back my house. What if I gave it to you Rishchaydish Shvat? Rishchaydish Kislev for sure. This year it ends in other. That means Rishchaydish Nissen is Rishashana Lashchiras Bat. Zog the Gemara. Zog the Gemara. Rashi says, Tanur Abanan Hamaske Bayis Lachavera VeLoi Gar Sinan Mi Nolon. All the other ones you wanted to know. How do you know? The Lav Mikroi Yalav the Rabbanan Who. This is not from a pasuk. It's the Rabbanan. There's no pasuk that Shchiras Batim stops Rishchaydish Nissen. When I say that even if you rent it to Shchaydish other, you only have a month to keep it. And even according to the opinion, we're going to see later on that that Reb Meir holds Yoim Echad B'Shana Chashav Shana that the some halachas where one day of the year is already considered a year. In other words, things that began one day before their Rosh Shana. You say the year finished. For example, a king, we're going to see, right? If a king becomes a king, Chav Tes Adar, Chav Ches Adar, Rishchidosh Nisan is a second anniversary. It's called Shana Shni. He was a king for one day. Yoim Echad B'Shana Chashav Shana. So L'Chaira here, you should say the same halacha. If I rent you the house on Chav Tes Adar or Chav Ches Adar, and I say for this year, so you have one day? He says, you don't say this. You know why? Shiny Hacha, you have to be practical. A person doesn't go through the bother of renting a home for less than 30 days. You don't go through the process of a renter renting if, if, if for, for a few days. In other words, of course, if I come to a, a community for a weekend and I want to rent a house for a weekend, and that's what I tell you, people do it. But we're saying, you didn't say it for a day. You said, I'm renting you the house for this year. To say that he meant one day, this we don't say is a normal thing. You're renting a house for a, a significant amount of, unless you explicitly state otherwise. And therefore, everyone will recognize halachically that if it's one day, you still have a, you still have a month. So therefore, if it's Rishchidosh Adar, you have a month. But if it's less, you're not going to say that what? That it's going to be only for one day. So let's see Rashi. Let's see Rashi. Ella be echad ba'ader. Avo be batzir mei hachi loy amrin and also loy shana. V'darba shana shleima. So therefore, he could live there a whole year. Rashi says. So when he says l'shana zu this year, he actually has the whole year because it can't be kolur shchaydish nissen because it's less than a month. 
So he has a full year. But what does he mean by the Shon Shalim? Whatever the day is. Whatever the day is. If it was Chavches, if it's Shvat, then he only has Tirish Chaydish Nissen. If he says Lashon Azu, he has only Tirish Chaydish Nissen. But if it's from Rish Chaydish other and on, where it's going to be less than 30 days, Rashi says you have a full year. Just like if you say Lashana. Just like if you say Lashana. The Lekala Meimah Da Adaita Da Hishata Agra. Why don't you just say he wanted to rent it for that year? The person doesn't go through the stich, and therefore we're not going to accept it. Why do you say Rosh Hashanah of Eschiris Batim is Nisan? Why don't you say it's the first day of Tishrei? I can, I can use something What's, like this. It's in the Arabal and it's... No, no that's, that's the point. Sins by people. We call Rosh Hashanah. When do we call Rosh Hashanah? If it's a Torah din, you can't argue. Torah says Rish Chodesh Nisan is the time for Chodesh Hashanah. You can't argue. I we call Rish Hashanah Tishrei. That's our problem. It's not the Torah's problem. But when it comes into Schiris Batim, it's all a rabbinic thing. So why they do this? Why don't they just keep it to the Rish Hashanah? When we say Tavsh, let, let's let's speak it practically. Okay, America people use the secular. The Yerner Tisrael, yeah, or the Jews who always deal with the Jewish year. You see, I'm renting you a house for Tavsh in Zion. That means Lashana Zu for Tav Shnai Zen. When does it end? Rishana. Rishana. Why? Because that's what we call the end of Tav Shnai Zayin. Tav Shnai Ches is going to begin Rishana. It's not going to begin Rishchay Dish Nissan. That's Derech Benayada, right? It's interesting. Even though Be'echad Benissan is a Rishana, but Rishana for what we count usually is Be'echad Betishna. So why didn't they make that for Schiras Bata? That's the Shaila Eme Betishna. And for the Gemara, in other words, if I rent a house till Rishchay Dish Elul and I say for this year it should end when Rishchay Dish Tishin, not Rishchay Dish Nissan. So the Gemara is stam ki agar inish beisa. Generally, when a person rents a house before Tishrei, not saying till when he wants to rent the house, lekula yemais hakshamim agar. It's usually you want a house for all of the rainy days for the winter. So therefore, we say if somebody rents a house in Elul, probably he does not want it should end on the first day of Tishrei unless he states it explicitly, and therefore we don't assume that Rosh Chodesh Tishrei is the Rosh Hashanah for Schirus Bat. So even though we call Echad B'Tishrei Rosh Hashanah, and therefore Lashana Zu should mean till Echad B'Tishrei, but when it comes to renting houses, because they assume that most people before the winter, they're looking for a house to live in the whole winter. And you have to remember the precious commodity of a house. So therefore he didn't mean that Rosh Chodesh Tishrei should be out in the streets, in the parks. It's not a place to time to sleep in the parks. And therefore, Chazal, when they had to estimate Lashon B'nai Adam, they said Lashana Zu would mean... Till the month of Nisan. The month of Nisan, you can go sleep in the park. But not Cheshvin Kislev Tevis Shvat Adar. Frek the Gemara, Zog the Gemara Vitana Kama de Braisa. What about the first Tana of the Braisa? This says, Yesh Oimrim Aflus Chiris Batim. Yesh Oimrim means not everybody agrees. So Tana Kama de Braisa. The first Tana of the Braisa who says it's Rosh Hashanah Li Burin. Rosh Hashanah Lechachim. Rosh Hashanah Lechumas Shkolim. He doesn't agree it's Lechiris Batim. Not like the Yeshayim. Or Vitana Didan, our Tana in the Mishnah, who also doesn't say Schiris Batim, they hold Rosh Hashanah is not Echad Benissim for Schiris Batim. Why? Because they say Benissim Nami Mishka Shkiach Kitri. The fact is that it's not uncommon that in Nissan you should have clouds. Kitri are clouds. In other words, rain should come down. In other words, Nissan is often part of Yemais Shamim. So therefore, the same Cheshbin that he doesn't want to leave the house, Rishchaydish Tishrei, he also doesn't want to leave the house, Rishchaydish Nissan. So therefore, they don't believe that Echad Ben Nissan is Rosh Hashanah L'Schiris Batim because they don't, they don't compare, they don't distinguish. True, Nissan starts spring, but it's very common that it's still raining, raining in Nissan. So whatever you said about Echad Ben Tishrei, you could say about Echad Ben Nissan. So therefore, what would be the halacha according to our Mishnah and according to the other Tana who doesn't say V'yash Aymrim? So the Pashtas, the Rajba says that our Tana would say that since we have no time when you could say, this is Rosh Hashanah L'Schiris Batim, so therefore, huh? so therefore when you say Lashana Zu, it means till this time, just like when you say Lashana, you have a whole year, Lashana Zu would also mean for this year till this time again. Because Sinus and Taitishna Yemaisak Shamim, so Shana Zu would be like you said Shana Stam, and therefore you could stay in the house for twelve months. That's what the Rajbal, the Ran argues, no, you go according to Lasha Bnei Adam, and Lasha Bnei Adam is Rosh Hashanah is Echad Batishne, and that would basically be basically be the halach, and that would be the Shashana Lashiris Batim. 
That would be the Shitta of the Ram versus the Shitta of the Rashba. So if somebody writes, I'm, I'm renting the house till the New Year. So he's gonna. Nobody else can have a problem. But New Year. And the, What's the New Year? Yeah. What's the New Year? I mean, New Year for the Jews is one New Year, and New Year for the, for the non-Jews year. is another New Year. And New Year for Bach could be this. Right. So the mission of Aitir. Be'echod be'elul. Be'echod be'elul. Rosh Hashanah lemaisa behema. We finished with Echad benisen in Agut Teshav b'Shal Tovu Motzlachas. We finished with Shachaydish Nis. What's the next Rosh Hashanah? Elul. The first day of Elul is Rosh Hashanah lemaisa behema. What's part of Rosh Hashanah lemaisa behema? Let's remember. A Jew, a farmer, whose animals give birth. So then he has to give Maisa Behem. As it says in Parshas Bechukhoisai, he takes through his, uh, his, uh, his sheep through a narrow entrance, and one in ten, Yi Yekoidish Lashem, he brings it to Yerushalayim, it's his. He offers it as a carbon and he eats in Yerushalayim. Shavat. Hasiri Yi Yekoidish Lashem. So now, What's the deal? What, what, what do you need to Rosh Hashanah here? The question is, what's considered a year? Born in what period of time? The last 10 years? In the last 40 years? In the last, how long? The last two years? So we say, this year. Which year? The answer is, it starts with Shchaydish Elo. Meaning, if I have a baby born, a baby animal born, Chavtes of, that's a different group. That's a different Maisa. Anything that's born from Rosh Elo till Rosh Chaydish Elo is one group, and I can't give Maisa from the animals, from the calves born this year, for the ones born in the previous year. Frek de Gemara money. Who is the author of this Mishnah? L'chayde must be the mayor. Why? The Tanan, we learned in Mishnah, it says the Tanya, but there uh, there's a tikkun here. The Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, L'chayde says, 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 the first day of El is Rosh Hashanah So clearly the mayor holds this shit. However, we have a problem. The beginning of the Mishnah said, Be'echad b'nissan is Rosh Hashanah l'regalim, for Yamim Taivim. What's that? Money. Reb Shimon, he, that has to be Reb Shimon. Why? Because we said, who holds? That Pesach is the first Yom Tif. Only Reb Shimon, who holds that you over on Balta Acher, if Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot is passed in order. Everybody holds, you don't, everybody else holds, you don't need it in the order. So it's Reb Shimon. Okay, so the beginning of the Mishnah was Reb Shimon, Reb Shoshana L'Regalim. The next line in the Mishnah, Reb Shoshana L'Maisa Behem, is Reb Meir. Eim is safe, and I'll go to the end of the Mishnah. Reb Elazar V'Reb Shimon O'Yemnim B'Echad B'Tishrei. Reb Elazar V'Reb Shimon O'Maisa Behem is the first day of Tishrei. So you have a very strange Mishnah. Reb Shimon is safe, Reb Shimon, O Metziyasa Reb Meir. The beginning of the Mishnah, Reb Shoshana L'Regalim, is Reb Shimon. Later in the Mishnah, Reb Shoshana L'Maisa Behem is B'Echad B'Tishrei, is Reb Shimon. And suddenly in middle, if our Mishnah follows the Meir, then you can't just tell me that Echad B'Nissa is Roshan Al-Regalim without telling me Divri Reb Shimon. If it's like Das Reb Shimon, so then don't just say, in other words, you have your problem. When it comes to Maisa Behemi, you tell me clearly that Reb Shimon argues and says, it's Be'echad B'Tishre. So you have to explain to me how this Mishnah is going. If this Mishnah Stam is following the Meir, so then why do you say Roshan Al-Malachim Al-Regalim Stam, say it, Divrit Reb Shimon, it's not Divrit Reb Meir. El Amai, you're going to say the Mishnah is following Stam who? Stam, Reb Shimon. So you say, Roshan Amalachim Vira Golem. Then you have a problem, because then, it's following Reb Shimon, Gezuntet, but then you just say, Be'echad Be'elul, Roshan Alamai Sebehema, and Reb Shimon holds it, Be'echad Betishrei. Right? As though the first view was somebody else, with Reb Meir. But when Roshan Amalachim Vira Golem, so it's very funny. When it comes to the shit of Reb Shimon by Reb Golem, you don't say his name. When it comes to the shit of Reb Shimon by Maisa Behema, you say his name. And you don't say the mayor's name. Who is this Mishnah going by? It's very strange. Zog the Gemara. Amr Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef says, Rabbi he. Our Mishnah is Rabbi, was authored by Rabbi Yudah Nasi. The Nasi of Tanoi. He himself embraced different opinions. He writes the Mishnah, Rabbi, in every din, follows the view that he himself holds. Birigolim Savalak Reb Shimon. Maisabem is Savalak Reb Meir. He's the man. It's him. You're right. If he was following other people's views, there's an inconsistency here. Either follow the mayor or follow the Shimon. If you're following the Shimon, gazun to hate, but then tell me it's the mayor. If you're following the mayor, gazun to hate, but then tell me it's the Shimon. It's his own view. He also, Shoshana Lerigolim, is like the Shimon, Pesach. 
He also holds Rosh Hashanah Lamaisa Behem as like a Meir Elo. He wants to bring the shit of Rib Shimon, so he brings the shit of Rib Shimon that what? That Rosh Hashanah Lamaisa Behem is the Echad Petishle, but he disagrees. I, he agrees with Rib Shimon and Rosh Hashanah Lir Golem, okay. He agrees with Rib Shimon in one and he disagrees with something else. But Maisa Behem is Savar Lakhad Meir. Frag the Gemari Hachi, really? So the whole mission is following the view of Rabbi Huda Nasi, no problem. So then I have a question. Arba Chamish Av. Why do you tell me Arba Rosh Hashanah Meir? It's five Arba Rosh Hashanah Meir. Why? We learned what's Pshat Rosh Hashanah Lirigalim? That the first Yom Tif of the year is Pesach. So this Rosh Hashanah is when? Tesvav Nisan. If this Rosh Hashanah is Tesvav Nisan, so now you have five Rosh Hashanah. Echad ben Nisan is Rosh Hashanah L'Malachim. Chamish Asa ben Nisan is Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim. Echad be'elul is L'Maisa Behema, right? Echad be'tishrei is Rosh Hashanah for years and Shemitim. And finally, Rosh Chayda Shvat, a Tubi Shvat is Rosh Hashanah L'Ilonis. If you tell me the beginning of the Mishnah was like Rav Shimon, then you don't have a problem. Why? Because Rav Shimon holds Rosh Hashanah for Maisa Behema is Echad Betishrei. So it's four. It's beautiful. If you tell me it's Rav Shimon, I'm good. Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim, Rosh Hashanah L'Malachim one, Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim two, there's no Elul. Maisa Behema is, is Tishrei, and then you have Shvat. Good. But you're telling me now it's not Rav Shimon. Because if it would be the Shimon, then my Sebehema is the Chaych Reb Shimon. But over there you suddenly mention Reb Shimon. Elamites Rebbe. If it's Rebbe, you have five Rosh Hashanah. You have Rosh Hashanah L'Malachim. Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim. Rosh Hashanah L'Mai Sebehema Elul, which Reb Shimon disagrees with. Tishrei is a new Rosh Hashanah L'Shanim. And Shvat is a fifth Rosh Hashanah. Rebbe for himself, both of them have to be in order. Yeah? Balta Achi, holds like Reb Shimon. Balta Achi, yeah, that's the word. Omar Rav, the Mishnah is Rebbe. I, it says Arba, not Chamisha. It says Pshat is. Rebbe says, I take a hold Chamisha. But Arba, the Divrei Hakal. Arba Rosh Hashanah is, the, is, the, is according to everybody. It's the minimum. It's the minimum, right. No less than four. I take a hold is more. What do I mean? Lidab Meir Arba. According to Reb Meir, you're going to have four Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because Dal Regalim. Reb Meir holds Bal Ta'acha over when? With one Yom Tif. There's no pace. Not even three. Forget the order. There's not even three. So Reb Meir, you take away the Regalim. So what do you have according to Reb Meir? Rosh Hashanah L'Malachim. Maisa Behema. Elu. Tishrei. And Shvat. Next, Reb Shimon. Arba. Reb Shimon also holds four. Why? Dal Maisa Behema. He doesn't hold Echad Bal as Maisa Behema. It's Echad Betishrei. So you have... Rish Chodesh Nisan, Tesvav Nisan, Rish Chodesh Tishrei, and Shvat. But I hold Taka 5. So when he says, I bought Rosh Hashanah Mehem, he doesn't mean maximum, he means minimum. Reb Nachem by Yitzchak Amar, Nachem by Yitzchak says, I have a different answer. When it says 4 in the Mishnah, he's not for, referring to 4 Rosh Hashanah Mehem. He's referring to the amounts of months that have Rosh Hashanah. Arba Chodoshim Ubehen Kamar Rosh Hashanah. There are four months, and in those four months, you have a few Rosh Hashanim. In Nisan Yitak, have two. In Nisan Yitak, have two. Our bar Rosh Hashanim, there's four months in which there's Rosh Hashanah. What are the four months? Nisan, which has two, according to Rebbe. Elul, which has one. Tishrei, which has one. And Shvat, which has one. Because either you agree with Basil or you agree with Beshamai, but it only has one. Either Tubi Shvat or Rishchai de Shvat. So the main that our Rosh Hashanah works. It's the shit of Rebbe. Ah, he brings Reb, Reb Shimon's name suddenly. Why is he bringing Reb Shimon's name? Because he doesn't agree with Reb Shimon. He, Reb Shishanah Lirik Golem, he agrees with Reb Shimon. He doesn't bring a name. This is my shit. It's, this is what I believe the shit is. By, by, by my Sebeim, he disagrees with Reb Shimon. So he brings Reb Shimon's name. Why by my Sebeim does he not bring the mayor's name? Because he agrees with the mayor. He agrees with the mayor. In other words, the author of this mission is Rebbe Yudanos. He's not just quoting. If he would be quoting... Then there would be a very deep inconsistency here, right? But why the second the second of the fields the necessity to mention that there's another shaitan in the beginning now? Because because in Maisa Behemoth there's a machloik is when Rosh Hashanah is. By the Regalim, they bechal hold there's no Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> you understand? By Maisa Behemoth there's a machloik is. Reb Meir holds it's Rosh Chodesh Elul. Reb Shimon holds it's Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. Reb Elazar and Reb Shimon no. By Rosh Hashanah L'Regolim, there's no other Rosh Hashanah. It's not Pshat. Reb Shimon holds, it's Pesach, and they hold it Shavuos. You're, you're Teufus? It's not a Rosh Hashanah. 
They don't believe that Yom Tovim have a Rosh Hashanah. Reb Shimon holds it's a Rosh Hashanah. They don't believe there's a Rosh Hashanah b'chlam. It's not like Maisa Behemah. Maisa Behemah, everybody holds it's a Rosh Hashanah. The question is when. Rosh Chodesh Elul, Rosh So he brings both shit to he wants, you should know that there's other shittas that he disagrees with. He has no problem with that. You understand? He wants you to know other shittas. But a Shoshana Lira Golem, what's the other shittah? Are they Yadinish? They hold it. I mean, you, you could say that he should have written in the Mishnah that uh, others hold it. That's what you're asking. Me. Okay, the Gemara asks now a question. Which begins with the words of Mesfit of Zion Ahmed Beis. But let's summarize to be able to appreciate the Gemara's question. The mission has stated that the first day, th- there are four Rosh Hashanah, there are four Rosh Hashanahs. The first day of Elul <coughs> is Rosh Hashanah for Maisa Behema. What does it mean it's Rosh Hashanah for Maisa Behema on the first day of Elul? The Pasuk says at the end of Parshas Bechu it's the last psukim of Ayikra, Sefer of Ayikra. says as follows. It's one pasuk, Sachako. But as you know, one pasuk contains a lot. V'chol masar boka v'tzoyin, koil ha-shayavr tachas ha-shavet ha-siri yekoidosh ladinoy. Meaning, any miser, any tenth, what we call tithe, tithe, of cattle or a flock, any that passes under the staff, the tenth one shall be holy to Hashem. This is called Maise Behem. The halacha is, if I have a farm and I have cows, the cows, of course, give birth to calf. I also have sheep. And the mother sheep, the female sheep, give birth to male or female baby sheep. So from every ten, one has to be given as Maise. This is called Maise Behem. It's a halacha that applies to... Uh, to cows, to calves, to calves of cows, and to little baby sheep. Those two species of animals, that's it. What's my Behema? Every year, I bring them all into a uh, a pen, what's it called, a corral, a corral, what a, a corral, right? Yeah. Um, whether it's the, ca- the baby calves or the baby sheep, and they have a narrow door, and I let them come out, and every tenth one, I mark, and that becomes Maisa Behema. What do I do with it? I don't have to give it away. I bring it to Yerushalayim. I offer it in the Beis HaMikdash. It's my own animal. And then I eat it. I eat it with the Kedusha of a carbon. I can eat it with myself. I can eat it with my family. I can eat it with my friends. Of course, people who are pure. I have to eat it in Yerushalayim. We speak about it every morning before Rabbi Shmuel We speak about the B'chor and the Maiser and the Pesach. The Maiser, that's this, this halacha. B'chor nechal l'koyanim. V'ha Maiser... L'chol Adam. I could share it with anybody. V'nechol in b'chol ha'ir. I can eat it in the entire city. B'chol ma'ichol. Any, any, any way I want. I could prepare it any way I want. L'shnei yamim v'layla echad. I have a night and I have two days. As always, the blood goes on the mezbeach. Part of the fat is offered on the mezbeach. And the rest is given to me, the owner. And I eat it in Yerushalayim with anybody I want. Anybody I would like to partake the meal. That's called ma'isa behem. The question now is, is there any time limit, or it's just unlimited? In other words, once in three years, once in three years, I put in all the new calves into a room and I do it. Once in five years, once in two years, every six months. No. We learn out, as we're going to see, that it's a year-by-year situation. It's a year by What do I mean it's a year-by-year? You have to know the animals that are born each year. Why is it so important? Let's say I don't have a huge farm. Only nine animals were born this year. Only nine. I have no din of my behavior. <coughs> I'm off. I have nine new animals. I tomorrow, I had a tenth. Tomorrow was a new year. It's a new cheshman. So you have to know when does the year begin? When does the year end? What, what, what's the rule here? That's number one. Number two, even if I had a thousand that were born this year. We learned to Masech the Beit, so you remember? There was a year that 13,000... Uh, 13,000 uh, Maise Behemoths, you have 300,000. Uh, I mean, even if I had thousands of new animals born, right? Let's say, huh? 130,000. I'm sorry, 130,000, yeah, I stand correct. Let's say I had 1,000 new animals born. So I have a lot of Maise Behemoths because it's 1 in 10. But 1,000 was born one year. 
the second thousand was born the next year. So I want to take from the second thousand and give Maisa for everybody. No, each year has its own gather. So the question is, when does the year begin? There's a machlekes in our Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Be'echad be'elul. Cut off Tammuz Rishchidosh Elul. I have to understand, why would they choose Rishchidosh Elul? Why not Rishchidosh Tammuz? Why not Rishchidosh Elul? What's Rishchidosh Elul? Where did Rishchidosh Elul come into the picture? We're going to discuss that soon. Why would Chazal choose Rishchidosh Elul? Where did they get it from? The Pasuk, of course, doesn't say that. But it doesn't say that the beginning of the Elul would be the sixth month in, in Chumash terminology, because there's no, there's no names of the month. It doesn't say the first day of the sixth month. It just says, you give my Behemah. So that's the question, why Rish Chodesh But that was the first opinion. The second opinion in our Mishnah, the opening Mishnah of Rish Hashanah was, Rebbe Lazar and Abshimin, they say it's not Be'echad Be'el, it's Be'echad Betishre. So you have Be'echad Be'el, Rish Hashanah, Lema'isa Behemi, Rebbe Lazar and Abshimin, and Be'echad Betishre. It's actually the same Rish Hashanah that we celebrate, is also the Rish Hashanah for Ma'isa Behemi. So cut off time would be either one Elul, day, day one of Elul, or day one of Tishre. That is what our Mishnah said. The Gemara struggled with an interesting question. The interesting question is, if, according to Reb Shimon, the first day of, of uh, Maise Behemah, the Rosh Hashanah of Maise Behemah, which is a real Rosh Hashanah, because it's the beginning of a year. In terms of the animals, it's the beginning of a year, right? In terms of Maise Behemah. I told you there's a word from the Kotsky Rebbe, a very geschmack of art on this Mishnah. He said, every person has a behemoth inside of them. Be'echad be'elol, rishchaydish elol, you start blowing shoifer. You have to start thinking about uh, dedicating part of your behemoth to Hashem. So that's Reb Meir. Reb Meir says, rishchaydish elol, already the job is done. Reb Lazar and Reb Shimon felt bad for Jews. And they said, listen, even if a whole El goes by and nothing happens, at least Be'echad Betishrei should be Rosh Hashanah, Ma'isa Behemah. At least Rosh Hashanah, the Behemah should wake up, he should start giving Ma'isa Behemah. Because the halach is like Reb Lazar Reb Shimon, Be'echad Betishrei, not Be'echad Bel. Reb Meir was, the Gemara says in Erev, and Reb Meir comes from the word Eir, La Yardu Chachamim Lamed Al Saif Daita, that's where they didn't make, the halach is usually not like Reb Meir, because people couldn't understand the depth of his wisdom, he was so filled with Meir, Meir. So the maid holds echad bel, or the blazer of Shimon holds echad betishir, the shemel of Maisa behemah. What's the issue here? The issue is as follows: the beginning of the Mishnah said, "Be'echad benisin, Rosh Hashanah l'melachim v'leregalim." Rosh Hashanah l'melachim is according to everybody. Rosh Hashanah l'regalim is only according to Reb Shimon. Why? Because only Reb Shimon holds that Pesach has to be seen as the first holiday. L'maynaf kemina, who cares? It's a holiday. Legeya to bal ta'acher. As we learned at length, that's only Reb Shimon. In other words, the f- beginning of the Mishnah is following Reb Shimon without even his name. So we're assuming that this Mishnah is following Reb Shimon. Suddenly, when it comes to Maisa Behema, Reb Meir's shit is quoted without his name, and then Reb Shimon is quoted as Echad Betishrei in his name. So there's a little bit of an there's a there's an inconsistency here, which Mahalik the Mishnah is going. If the Mishnah is following in the shit of Reb Shimon, like the beginning of the Mishnah, so then it should also say, Be'echad betishrei maiser behema, and Reb Meir says, Be'echad be'elu. That's how it should say. Elamai, the Mishnah is following the Mahalach of Reb Meir. So you just say, Be'echad be'elu, maiser behema, even without a name. But in the beginning of the Mishnah, you quoted Reb Shimon without a name. Later you quoted Reb Shimon with a name. We said it's Rabbi. Oh, so the Gemara says, it's not Reb Shimon, it's Rabbi. Rebbe agrees with Reb Shimon when it comes to Rosh Hashanah Lerigolim. He agrees with Reb Meir. It comes to Ma'aseh Behemah. That's why he doesn't quote Shittas over there. It's true. It's only one Shitta. But this is Rebbe. The Mishnah is following Rebbe. He's bringing the other opinions. He wants to bring the other opinions which he disagrees with. But the Mishnah follows his view. Yeah. His view is Rosh Hashanah Lerigolim. And his view is Echad Be'elul. Yeah. You're right. That's why Reb Shimon he brings only when it comes to Ma'aseh Behemah. Not when it comes to the Golem. Because there he disagrees with Reb Shimon. That's how the Gemara explained it. So the Gemara is said, but there's a big problem here. What's the problem? We now come to the question that Rabbi Yehuda asked a few weeks ago. If so, it's not our Bar Rosh Hashanah. It's Hamisha Rosh Hashanah. Why? According to Reb Shimon, it's Taka four Rosh Hashanahs. Because Reb Shimon holds the first Rosh Hashanah is what? Be'echad Benissen. The second Rosh Hashanah is Pesach. The third Rosh Hashanah is when? Yeah? 
the third Rosh Hashanah is Be'echad Betishrei, because he doesn't hold Echad Be'elul as Maise Behema. And the fourth Rosh Hashanah is Shvat. Either is Chodesh or to be Shvat. So you have four Rosh Hashanahs. Beautiful. According to the mayor, you also have four Rosh Hashanahs. Echad Benissim. <coughs> he doesn't hold from Pesach being a Rosh Hashanah, because by him, Baal Ta'achir, you're over in one Yom Tif. You don't even need three. Forget about order. You don't even need three. The, thir- the second Rosh Hashanah is Echad Be'elul. Right? The third Rosh Hashanah is Echad Betishle for other things, not Maise Behema. The fourth Rosh Hashanah is Shvat. Beautiful. But yeah, if yeah. you say that the Mishnah is following your Rebbe, how could he begin our Bar Rosh Hashanah? Hey? He believes in five Rosh Hashanahs. You just told me. The Echad Benissen. Pesach, Israel Galim, is number two. Rosh Chodesh Elul is number three. Rosh Chodesh Tishrei is number four. And then Shvat, either like Beshama or like Beshalom. That's a very big question. He should have began the Mishnah, Chamish Rosh Hashanah. Hey? On this, the Gemara gives two answers. The answer of Rava and the answer of Reb Nachman, the son of Reb Yitzchak. Rava says, you're right. He would have began himself Chamisha Rosh Hashanah. What he means is, minimum Arbar Rosh Hashanah. In other words, Arbar Rosh Hashanah, I'm, I'm going to tell you in this mission a few different opinions. Let me tell you, the common denominator is there's no less than four. It's like Arbar minimum. Maximum there's more. Why? According to Reb Meir, it's going to be four. According to Reb Shimon, it's going to be four. According to me, it's going to be five. Reb Nachman by Yitzchak, who didn't like Rav's answer, and we understand that there's a little bit of a difficulty in that answer. Why? Because it's a pesnat so gishmak. He says our boy doesn't mamish mean our boy. It means our boy minimum. Nobody argues. So Reb Nachman by Yitzchak says also something which is a little difficult. It doesn't mean there are four Rosh Hashanahs. It means there are four months in which there are Rosh Hashanahs. There are five Rosh Hashanahs. Arba is like almost, he would say, Arba Chadashim. There are four months in which there are Rosh Hashanahs. So the Arba doesn't refer to Rosh Hashanahs. The Arba refers, you have to like put in a word, so to speak. The Arba refers to four months in which there's Rosh Hashanahs. What are the four months? Nisan, Elo, Tishrei, Shvat. Of course, in Nisan, there's more than one Rosh Hashanah. There are two, according to Rabbi. One is Rosh Chodesh Nisan, and one is the 15th day of Nisan. According to the mayor and the Shimon, you don't have to say this. There are taka four Rosh Hashanahs. According to Rebbe, there are four months in which there are Rosh Hashanahs. This is how the Gemara reconciled it. So at now, at this point, everything seems to have been resolved. Here the Gemara comes up with a very big question. Mesva, the Bnei HaYeshiva, the people in the Yeshiva, the students, asked a question, which both is a question on the explanation of Rava and an explanation on Reb Nachem Yitzchak. Both answers ultimately have a problem. Whether you believe that the Mishnah is counting four Rosh Hashanahs basically on the minimum number of Rosh Hashanahs, or you believe that the Mishnah is counting the months in which there are Rosh Hashanahs. Either way, they ask the question. We have a Brice, a new Brice. Earlier, Dav Zayin Amad Aleph, we bought a Brice about Be'echad Benissin, that it's a Rosh Hashanah for Chadashim, for Iburin, for Trumas Hashkalim, for Schiris Batim. That we learned another Brice. But we have here another Brice, which is very shocking. The Brice says as follows. Shisha Asa Benissin Rosh Hashanah La'aymer. The 16th day of Nissan is also Rosh Hashanah. It's a Rosh Hashanah for the Karben Oimer. What do we mean it's a Rosh Hashanah for the Karben Oimer? There's a mitzvah in Parshish <laughs> Emer on the 16th day of the month of Nissan, which is, of course, the second day of Pesach. The Jewish people had to bring a Karben Sibur. They had to harvest the new barley, grind it into flour, bring an oimer, which is a measurement of barley flour, basically what's known as the tenth of an eifa, um, uh, the shear that were mechuyiv and chala, which is basically uh, uh, 43, uh, 43 point, the volume of 43.2 eggs. And they took that barley flour and they offered it on the mizbeach, part of it on the mizbeach, and it was consumed, and this is called the carbon oimer. This had to be brought to Zionists. We say every in, 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 in Chomish, Usfartim Lachem in Machiras Hashabbos, Miyoim Haviachim is Omer Atnufa, Sheva Shabbos is Tmim is Tiena, Ad Mi Machiras Hashabbos Ashvi is Tispuru Chomishim Yoim, Vikraft the Minche Chadashalasha. From this day, we start counting 49 days, as we do today without the carbon Omer, and the 15th day we celebrate Shavuos, and we bring another carbon. The carbon we bring on Shavuos is known as Shte Halech. Two loaves of bread that were actually made from chametz, from chametz together with a mincha that was made from 
the, uh, together with uh, together with the special sheep, two sheep that were brought also on Shavuos, together with the bread, and this bread was eaten by the Koyanim on Shavuos in the base of Mikdash. This is called Shtei Halechem. The difference is the Oimer was brought from barley, the Shtei Halechem was made from, from, from wheat, and usually all the grain and meal offerings were matzah, besides there were unique exceptions. One of them was the carbon of Shavuos, which was made precisely of chametz, not of matz. Now, it's a Rosh Hashanah for the carbon oimer. Shisha b'sivin, Rosh Hashanah l'shtei alechem. It's a Rosh Hashanah for the two loaves of bread, which they used to bring on Shavuos. I should just say, unlike the barley, Oimer, which part of it was burnt on the Mizbeach, a koimetz, part of it was burnt. The Shtei Alechem was not burnt on the Mizbeach. It was actually eaten in the Beis HaMikdash. It was two loaves of bread that were baked and it was eaten. And this was brought on Shavuos. As I said, it was chametz, And this was the Shtei Alechem. Now, why is it called Rosh Hashanah? Let's see Rashi. Zok Rashi. Rosh Hashanah lo'aymer. Lechel min hachadosh mikan ve'elech. Once you bring the carbon Oimer, you can eat the new grain that has grown. Lechel, from this time you can eat from the Chadash, from the new grain, Mekan, from now the Why is Rashi saying this? Because Rashi is perturbed by the question, <coughs> why does it say Rosh Hashanah Lo'aymer? Shisha Sabin is Rosh Hashanah Lo'aymer. You have to bring a carbon Oymer then. What makes it a Rosh Hashanah? You're going to tell me that your Dalad Nisan is Rosh Hashanah for B'tikas Chametz? The night of Yudal is Rosh Hashanah for B'tikas Chametz? You're going to tell me that Echad Batish is Rosh Hashanah for B'tikas Shoifer? You're going to tell me that Purim is Rosh Hashanah for Shalach Manas? Rosh Hashanah means the beginning of a year. It's not a, there's an obligation to do the carbon oimer, and it's done. It's not a Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah means the beginning. Tavshin Ayin Zayin began on the first day of Tishrei. It didn't end on the first day of Tishrei. It's still now Tavshin Ayin Zayin. Dalit Shvat is still Tavshin Ayin Zayin. That's called Rosh Hashanah, the head of a year, just like a head. You don't end after the head, hopefully, right? The head is the head of an entire body. You tell me this Tazayin. Listen, you have to bring a carbon oimer. That's it, and it's done. It's not a Rosh Hashanah. You'd say, you listen, there's no carbon oimer anymore. It's once a year, you bring it. What's the Rosh Hashanah oimer? If you bring an oimer every day for six months, and you tell me this is the first day you have to bring, I understand. You're not going to tell me, you Dalit Nisan, there's Rosh Hashanah from Tikkas Chometz. Because every day you do Tikkas Chometz, and this is the beginning. That's what's bothering Rashi. You understand? So Rashi says, no, no, no. Lechel minachadosh mikan ve'elech. There's something that happens for the rest of the year. And that is, the halach is that all the new grain... All the new grain that's growing in the field and the farm, you're not allowed to eat. It starts growing in the time of spring, the new season, right? You're not allowed to eat until you don't bring the carbon oil. I have a farm. There's new wheat. I want to harvest the wheat and make challah or bread. I'm not allowed to. Why? Because it's not the Zionism yet. That's why you'll see. You'll have on cakes, it will say, Yosha, not Chodosh. What's Yosha, not Chodosh? I'm talking today. You know what that is, right? Chodesh means it's new. What's he's new? It's from the new season. Let's say this spring, it's the new season. The problem is, as long as the Zionists didn't come around, you can't eat it. Yoshan would mean it's from the harvest of the last year, which already became Mutter, last Zionist. The question is the status of Chodesh Bizman Hazah. That's a very uh, debatable issue. Is there a din of Chodesh Bizman Hazah? And it's a huge machloikis. But Bizman Habayis, when they were makr of the Karben when they were makar of the carbon oimer, you had to wait till the carbon oimer. So it actually says, that's the Rosh Hashanah. It's a Rosh Hashanah. In other words, that from this date, the new tvu is ready. The new tvu is eatable. Without, be, before this date, you can't eat the new grain. You have to eat from the old grain. So one year to the next year. Or it stops Rosh Hashanah. Uh, any, any grain that grew in the new season and took root in the earth, it took root in the earth by Tezayin Nissen, Becomes mutter from the carbon oimer. Huh? Right. If it took root before tazayinisin, that becomes exempt with the car- that becomes included in the carbon oimer. Now let's say it's going to grow an ear or seven, but it took root before tazayinisin, it's included. But let's say I just planted it yesterday, it didn't take root yet, so tazayinisin can't include that. This ha- this grain will have to wait for the next tazayinisin for the next carbon oimer. You say in the chlal they store flour in the silos. It's usually old, huh? The flour is old. 
<coughs> does it take root? How do you know? How what? How long after planting does it take root? How, how do you know if it's not a seed? Depends when you planted it. I understand, but... I think a week or two, yeah. They, I mean, the far, the, yeah, 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 it's always the same, yeah. There's also machlokes of Sfirah Sa'imer, but Chalal is Medayr Aysa Medayr Abonam today. Sfirah Sa'imer is the counting of the Aymer based on the carbon Aymer. Machlokes of Taishvus and the Rambam. Do we say that you Bechalam Mechuyiv and Sfirah Sa'imer? Some Rishonim say you have to bring the carbon If you don't bring the carbon there's no mitzvah to count. Others say it's two separate mitzvahs. The carbon and the counting of the aim is two separate mitzvahs. Does that mean that Shri is also not, not to be celebrated? What do you mean? <laughs> because it's all only, it's, it's, Shri is based on the 49 days. It's not based on... We do it at Mahatoyed, but Shri is not that, that is beyond... Tishpil Chamei Shemim, you have yeah. to mean you have to count 49 Shemim days. So you're over here, you have to count you know. Right, so I'm saying, no, no, the 50th day you'll have shruas, but the question is, is there a mitzvah of Sfira Sa'imer? Okay, so I'll call upon him. Tazayin Nisan is Rishishon Eloimer. What about shruas? Shruas, he says, Shisha B'Sivin is Rishishon Elo Shtei Halechem. What's this Rishishon? Not just a chiv to bring Shtei Halechem. Rashi says, Rishishon Elo Shtei Halechem, Nishat Shehashonah Lahavi Menachis Menachadosh. It's a new year. It's the first time you could bring a carbon from Chadosh. You can now bring all your carbonas from the new grain. What the Oymer does for the larger country, the Shtei Alechem does for the Beis HaMikdash. Meaning, even after Pesach, I can eat from my new grain in the field, I can eat, I can make challah, I can make cake, whatever, I can eat kernels, but I still can't bring a carbon, a meal carbon, a grain carbon from the new. I can only bring from the old. For this I have to wait Shavuos. Once I bring the Shtei Alechem from the new grain, that's Matir, all the new grain for a carbon. So what the Oymer does for the regular grain, the Shtei Alechem does for the Beis HaMikdash Dikah grain. The new grain I want to bring to the Beis HaMikdash. But let's say I want to bring a carbon Erev Shavuos, a grain carbon, I have to bring from the old ones. Even though I can eat the new ones, but I can't bring a carbon from the new ones. So therefore we meet the Shtei Alechem as a new Rosh Hashanah also. It's a new year that what? That all the new grain can come to the base of Mikdash. So we have two new Rosh Hashanahs. Rosh Hashanah la'oymer, Rosh Hashanah la'shtehalach. If so, frag the Gemara, le'rava, according to Rava, that the Mishnah is actually counting the days of Rosh Hashanah, and the minimum is for Lisna Shisha. The Mishnah should have said there are six Rosh Hashanahs. Why are there six Rosh Hashanahs? Because everybody holds to Zionism as a Rosh Hashanah la'oymer, and Shisha b'sivin as a Rosh Hashanah la'shtehalach. And you can't tell me Reb Meir disagrees, <coughs> Shimon disagrees. Nobody disagrees with these karbonas. It's a clear pasuk in Chumash. Nobody could disagree. So you have six Rosh Hashanahs. Are you telling me you're going minimum, not maximum? Go on. Minimum is six. But Reb Nachim, by Yitzcha, going to Reb Nachim, by Yitzcha, the mission accounts, the months that have Rosh Hashanah. So MS, the, si- the 16th of Nisan didn't give you a new month. So it's still only four months. But the sixth day of Sivan <laughs> gave you a new month. Reb Nachem by Yitzchak, listen Chamisha. You should say Chamisha Rosh Hashanah. Because according to him, Arba means four months in which there are Rosh Hashanahs. It should have said there are five months in which there are Rosh Hashanahs. What are the five months? Nisan, Sivan, Elul, right? There's three. Tishrei is four. And Shvat is five. Even if you're not going to count me the 16th of Nisan, for whatever reason, you're not going to count me all your Rosh Hashanahs. But your numbers you have to get right. You can't have your numbers wrong. You have a concept in Halach, in, in Shas, you have a concept called Tana Vashir. Sometimes the Tana doesn't mention everything. Sometimes he le- leaves over. So you could say that even though, you can ask a better question, even if it's five months, why didn't he mention Tazayin Nisan? Why didn't he mention Tazayin Nisan? Right? At least mention it. So on this you could say ton of Ishir. He didn't write all the Rosh Hashanahs, but the problem is you can't give a wrong number. <laughs> a wrong number you can't give. That's unacceptable. Not to go through the whole list. Okay, no. But to give a wrong number, that's deceiving. That's misleading. You can't say there are four months with our Rosh Hashanahs, but there are five months with Rosh Hashanahs. I didn't understand. But it's not Echad Benis. You're right, you're right. It is a question. 
No, before, the sugi before was discussing particularly Rish Chodesh Nisan. Rish Chodesh Nisan has more Rish Hashanahs. Truma Shkalem, Iburin, Chadoshim, Schiris Batem. Right, that's what we were discussing. Rish Chodesh Nisan, you're telling me, Melachim and Regalim, there's another few Rish Hashanahs on Rish Chodesh Nisan. Here the question is a general one. Over there, they don't change the number. Huh? The emesis, even without Rav and Ibnachim by Yitzchak, the Gemara could have just asked this as a stamp question. Why are you telling me I bought Rosh Hashanah? Yeah, there are more Rosh Hashanahs. What? The Gemara could have asked that. But the point is, Rav and Ibnachim by Yitzchak tried to make everything fit in perfectly. The Gemara is saying, after all their explanations, you're still stuck. You're right, even without them, we, would just, we could just stamp ask a question. There are more Rosh Hashanahs, why are you ignoring them? And you would have to answer these questions. But the question now becomes stronger because Rav and Nachim Yitzhak worked it all out, right? They turned it into a nice puzzle. The Gemara says you still have a big problem. Silent Rav. Silent Nachim Yitzhak. Rav, you should say six. And Nachim Yitzhak, you should say five. That's the question the Gemara says. Listen to Chamish. Now, here, before we get to the answer, the Achiroinim ask a very interesting question. It's a Shar for Shail. What's the question? The Turei Evan asks it. The Turei Evan is the commentary of the Shagas Arya. A Masech Rosh Hashanah called Turei Evan. The Pnei Yeshu asks it. Svasemes asks it. Many Achreinim ask it. The Gemara said before, why don't we mention in our Mishnah that Rosh Chodesh Nisan is Rosh Hashanah L'Trumas Shkalem for the new Karbonis that you buy from the new Shkalem cut off Tanis Echad Benisim. And the Gemara said, because B'di Evad, if you are makra from the old Shkalem, you're Yotzeh. So therefore, it's not mamish or Hashanah that's li'ikuva, because even if you bring from the old shkalim, it's good. You're missing a mitzvah, you have to bring from the new ones, but it's not like the, it's not going to disqualify the carpet. If so, they ask a gewaldika shayla. We have a halacha, that if somebody brings a mincha from the new grain before shvuas, before they brought the shtei halacha, it's not a pasal of carbon. Let's say I'm a choyif to bring a carbon mincha, and I bring it from the new grain erev shvuas. I wasn't supposed to, because I had to wait for the shtei halacha. I was supposed to bring it from the old grain, from the grain of the previous year that was mutter from last year's shvuas. But I didn't. I brought it from my new, I knew I had new harvest here that just grew, and I took this grain and I brought it as a carbon. I'm yoytze the mincha. I'm not supposed to do it, but I'm yoytze. If that's the case, why does the Gemara now ask the question that shisha b'sivit should be the shoshana l'shtei halacha? The same answer that you gave. For Trumas Hashkalim, you just gave it a few lines ago. On Dav Zayin, you have here also that the Diyevet, it's not Mamish Rosh Hashanah because if you bring from the Mincha of the new grain before Shtei Alechem, you Yitzah. That's the question. No, so, you still have the question about the Omer. Uh, you still have the question about the Omer, yeah. You still have the question about the Omer. Because over there, Taka, it's not good. You can't bring from the new. <laughs> over there, you can't bring from the new. You can ask the question the other way, and then, and, and then, and then it's on both. Because you're still allowed to eat from the old ones, even even though it's not the new ones, still eat the, the old ones. So it's not like it shouldn't have to be a cutoff time. It doesn't cut out the old ones. You can always eat the old ones. Because, so that that's question. You can always eat the old ones. Yeah, that's true. You could. You could. <coughs> so I'll tell you a few answers that I saw they bring from the Mafarsha. Answer number one is from the Turei uh, the Turei Evan. The Turi Yevon says you can't compare it to Truma Shkalem. By Truma Shkalem, there was a time that even the Chathili you could bring from the old Shkalem. And that is, if the new Shkalem were not delivered to the Beis HaMikdash, it's not an union of B'di Yevet. The Chathili, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to use the old Shkalem for the Karbonas. By Shtei HaLechem, you're never supposed to bring from the, from the new grain before you bring to Shtei HaLechem. If you did, you were Yotze the carbon. The carbon is kosher. But you're not supposed to. In other words, it's always an Indian of if you did it. There's never a directive that lechatchila you should do it. So he says that's that's the difference between the two. The Svasema says, when the Tana says, I don't want to make Rosh Hashanah from something that Bidi Evit, I would be Yoitsu without it, it's only to combine that Rosh Hashanah with other things. But to make a new Rosh Hashanah, you have to make even somebody that would be ever your yotze, which means the echad ben is already the shoshana lemalachim. It's already the shoshana lemalachim. Now you want to know why didn't you also count with it through masashkal? It's anyway a shoshana. So we say, listen, to bring it together with the first shoshana, you can't compare. It's not the same level. This is an absolute shoshana, and this is only a lechatchila dikar shoshana. So meila, 
It's like Shraga Betir Ramaya Hani. You don't light a candle in the middle of the day. Because Lagabi the daylight, the candle is going to get bottled. So when you're, when you're bringing together in one day a few Rosh Hashanahs, you don't bring an inferior Rosh Hashanah, Lagabi a better Rosh Hashanah. But Peshisha Besivin is a self contained Rosh Hashanah. As a self contained Rosh Hashanah, he said it's a good Rosh Hashanah. I'm not comparing it with another Rosh Hashanah. That's the difference. So by Trumas Ashkolam, it's an answer. But here it's not an answer. That's what, uh, that's what he says. There's another answer I saw in the Degel Yehud, also a very interesting answer. He says, as a, by Trumas Ashkolam, a very nice word, by Trumas Ashkolam, who is the Shkolam used for? It's used for the Karbonist Sibur, not for private Karbonist. So let's say the people in the Beis Hamikdash realize we have no shkalim for the new year. So they go and they take the old shkalim. So what happens? So he says, this Rosh Hashanah for this year was completely obliterated. The Rosh Hashanah was that this is cut off time from today. You're only buying from the new shkalim, and you didn't. You bought from the old shkalim. So the whole Rosh Hashanah was bottled. It was obliterated. By Shtei HaLechem, it's about individual karbonas. So even if I come and I bring a carbon from the new grain before Shavuos, the Rosh Hashanah still exists for the rest of Klal Yisrael. It's not like the Rosh Hashanah was bottled. For me, the Rosh Hashanah doesn't exist, because for me, I brought a mincha from the new grain before the Shtei HaLechem. But for every other Jew who's going to bring a mincha, he's going to bring from his old grain. So therefore, the Rosh Hashanah still exists, even if I violated it. But by Trumas Shkalim, once they use the old ones, and they're allowed to use the old ones, Ois Rosh Hashanah. By Shtei Alechem, it's never Ois Rosh Hashanah. It's not no Rosh Hashanah. My Rosh Hashanah was gone. For me, it's not Rosh Hashanah anymore. Why? Because I did it before Shavuos. But for the rest of the world, for every other Jew, it's still, uh, it's still Rosh Hashanah. Those are some different, different answers that are, uh, that are given. Okay, so the Gemara Vaiter. There is a question here, the Aruch Lemneir Mutschitzich, the Chayr Ashtarke question. And he says, he doesn't understand the question, why B'Shisha B'Sivin should be Rosh Hashanah and B'Tazayin Nisan should be Rosh Hashanah. He says, all the other Rosh Hashanahs are very different quality. They are obligatory Rosh Hashanahs. Here, you're not dealing with an obligation. In other words, you're dealing with a Dvar HaRishos. What do I mean? If you want, after you bring the carbonoimer, could you eat old grain? You can eat old grain. You don't have to eat your new grain. After Shavuos, can I bring a mincha from old grain? Of course you can bring a mincha from old grain. So let's say, yeah, let's say after the carbonoimer, I want to eat old grain. After the shtei alechem, you want to eat, uh, you want to bring one old grain. So he says, maybe the reason the Mishnah didn't bring these two Rosh Hashanahs is because you can't say that uh, Rosh Hashanah here is similar to the other Rosh Hashanahs. The Rosh Hashanahs here are different type of Rosh Hashanahs. If you want to dafke eat new grain, it's a Rosh Hashanah. I don't want to eat new grain. I don't want to bring a carbon from new grain. Well, it's not Rosh Hashanah for me. The other ones, it's a din. It's a din. I'm writing a star. I have to write. It's the third year of the king. Balta Acher, I'm going to be over if the Pesach Shavuos Sukkos, yeah? Maise Behem, I have to give Maise only from the group that was born from Rishchei Deshele Lenon. These are Dinim. It's not like, oh, I'm not interested in this. Here, I'm not interested in this Rosh Hashanah. I don't need it. If you want to eat new grain, you need it. But if not, not. No so to speak. If you're That's not a right. farmer, you have to have a carbon omer. Let's say I, I grow. No, if you want new grain, you need a carbon omer. But I'm it's right. not a chuy of the Rosh Hashanah. It's a rishus the Rosh Hashanah. If you want to enjoy the new grain, this is your Rosh Hashanah. But if not, it's not your Rosh Hashanah. It's like a voluntary Rosh Hashanah. You understand? It's not like the ah. Uh, oh, it's a carbon silver. It's a carbon sibu, yeah. Uh, it's not a carbon. Wait, yet. so uh, how many is brought for just one is brought? One aimer, that's it. Oh. It's a barley oh. offering, a barley flour offering. You you harvest the grain at night, to Zionism in public. They used to do it in public because the Tzadukim didn't believe in it. <coughs> they believed they had to do it on Sunday, not the second day of Pesach. They would harvest it at night. It was a big ceremony. Wow. So then it's on not, it's not, up, on to it's not up to you then. When, when you can eat, when you can't eat, it's up yeah, to you. Whenever the, the Kohen does the... No, it's up to you. If you want to eat new grain, if you don't want to eat new yeah. grain, Pashalista. No, who 
who's you? Who's you? <laughs> you and me. Any Jew. You don't yeah, want to eat new grape? The, I don't care. Yeah, but you're not the one bringing the car. <laughs> but that's not a Rosh Hashanah. I explained before. The, B'dikas Chametz is not Rosh Hashanah. You make, why don't we make Rosh Hashanah for B'dikas Chametz? Why don't we say Rosh Hashanah is, why don't we say Chanukah is Rosh Hashanah for lighting Chanukah candles? Put them as Rosh Hashanah for Shalach Manas. I'm asking you. For Hamantash. That, it's not Rosh Hashanah. Put them. You have to make Shalach Manas. It's not the beginning of a year. The carbon Oymah doesn't make it a Rosh Hashanah. What makes it a Rosh Hashanah is the fact that you can... So the Aruch Lene wants to answer. He says, I'll tell you what's Pshat Rosh Hashanah. What Pshat Rosh Hashanah is that on the first day of Nisan, on, the, on Tezayah Nisan, the Isur Chodosh stops. And on Sivan, the Isser to be Makriv Chadr stops. That's the Rosh Hashanah. He says, but that wouldn't work, because we learned before that in our Mishnah, we don't count Rosh Hashanah Lahav Sakas, only Rosh Hashanah Lahas Chalas. So the Rosh Hashanah, the fact that the Isser stops, is not Rosh Hashanah. We're looking for something that begins. For something that begins, it's only, it's only voluntary. So this is a question of the Aruch Lener. So the Svas Emma says that if not for Rashi, he would have touched the Gemara a little differently. He would have said Pshat in the Gemara that Rosh Hashanah La'oymer means as follows, that all the Tvua that I planted and it took root before Tezayin Nisan, the carbon Oymer is matter that Tvua. And the Tvua that took root after Tezayin Nisan, I have to wait for the next carbon Oymer to be at matter. So he says that's the Rosh Hashanah. And that's for everybody. That's for Din on everybody. Whether you want to eat it or you don't want to eat it is your problem. But the fact is I have a farm. The tfuah that took root in my field before Tazayin Nisan, that has a different chalois in halacha. It becomes a chefze that's mutter. You, you, you don't want to eat it? Don't eat it. I don't care what you eat. You understand? But there's a chalois on every Jew. It's not a voluntary thing. It's a voluntary thing if you want to seize the opportunity. But together, that your tfuah becomes mutter, that's a din that happens to Zion Nisan. The Mela, that's how he touches the Rosh Hashanah. Rashi, however, says, what Rosh Hashanah Leimer? Lechel min ha-chadosh mikan ve'elech. Lechel min ha-chadosh. This is a very interesting aura of the Aruch Lene. Al kol Panna, we're back left with our question. However you want to explain the question in detail, that they were, we're missing two Rosh Hashanahs. No, he agrees, but Rashi, it's, Rashi, Rashi says simple. Rashi says simple. Yeah, you could eat everything that was done. Amr Rav Papa, so Rav Papa answers. A very interesting answer. Ki kachashiv, the Tana counts Rosh Hashanah is only midi something, the chayal me'urta. Rosh Hashanah begins at night. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah has to begin at night. That's what we count Rosh Hashanah. Midi de le chayal me'urta, something that doesn't begin. Chayal means it's not chal, it doesn't start. At night, urta is at night, like kachashiv, we don't mention. That's why the carbon oymen and shtei alechem are out. Because when does the Rosh Hashanah begin? By day. You couldn't bring the carbon. No carbon was brought at night. So the shtei alechem was brought shvu was day. The carbon oymen was brought Pesach morning. The hachana started at night, but the, but the heter is not. My tvua becomes mutter be'etzem ayoyim azah. Right? It says lechem ve'koli ve'charm aloy soichlu etzem ayoyim azah the day that you bring the carbon oymen. It's only by day. Huh? Urta means night, and Ramsha means Ramsha, morning. Morning. Safra of Ramsha. I'm sorry, yeah, you're right, you're right. Ramsha is Erev, Safra is Boiker, Urta is night, yeah. Also, uh, Ramsha is before. Erev, now. right, Erev, yeah. So therefore, he tainas, the Rosh Hashanah and our Mishnah are all nights. For example, if I write a document, tonight is Rosh Chodesh Nissen, I have to write in the document, it's the second year of the king, or the third year, or the tenth year, even at night. The same is true with. The other ones, Rosh Hashanah, our Rosh Hashanah, doesn't begin in the morning, it begins at night. Tu Bishvat, Rosh Hashanah Le'ilonis, begins at night. Maisa Behema, if a calf is born the night of Rosh Chodesh Elul, that's, that's part of Rosh Hashanah. The Rosh Hashanah has to begin at night. In other words, it starts and gives me a full day of Rosh Hashanah. Not a half a day. Not a half a day. The Rosh Hashanah has to be a 24-hour Rosh Hashanah. A full day that is Rosh Hashanah. That's why Rav Papa says our Mishnah doesn't recognize these two Rosh Hashanahs. They are Rosh Hashanahs, but it doesn't go into our category. Frag the Gemara, one second. Hare Regolim, the Loichaili Meyorta. You're being dishonest here, Lechai. Rosh Hashanah, the Malachim, it's going to work. Maisa Behem, it's going to work. Schmidt and Yoivlis, it's all going to work. 
but the regalim is not going to work. But it's bal ta'ach. What's Rosh Hashanah the regalim? It says lechaylem meruta. They didn't start at night. Let's remember what was the Rosh Hashanah the regalim that if I make a pledge for a carbon and I didn't bring it over three yamim toivim, Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot, I'm over on bal ta'ach. So he says, now I want to ask a question. When does this start? It doesn't start on the night of Tesvav Nissen, because you can't bring a carbon on the night of Tesvav Nissen. It starts on the day of Tesvav Nissen. The Gemara believes that the Yom Tif, Pshat of Baal Ta'achir is, the Yom Tif, you come into the Beis HaMikdash. The first Yom Tif that you come creates an obligation on you to bring the carbon. Okay? Now you have one Yom Tif. Now you have a second Yom Tif. Now you have a third Yom Tif. After the third Yom Tif, you have a Baal Ta'achir. When does that obligation begin on Yom Tov? Not by night, by day. Because by night you can't bring a carbon. The Yom Tov starts, Yom Tov starts at night. But the Baal Ta'achir is coming mitzad what? Mitzad the carbon. And the Chiyu HaKarbon only starts by day. So the Mela, the Rosh Hashanah of Pesach is for what? It's not for eating matzah. For eating matzah, that's not a Rosh Hashanah. It's not for the matzah. The matzah starts at night. The Seder starts at night. But the carbon that I have to bring on Pesach is only Pesach in the morning. And that's going to be the Balta Acher. So if so, how do you tell me the Mishnah doesn't mention the Shoshonas that don't include okay. dates? And for the Gemara, the Bach takes out the two words, Kivan Shetzarech. The Gemara says you misunderstand it. Le'isuya. To bring the carbon that you pledged, may karim mechayev you were mechuyed before Yom Tev. The Chiyuv doesn't start on Yom Tev. The Chiyuv starts when you made a neder. I made a neder, Rishchotesh Nisan. I'm going to bring a sheep as a carbon adova. I have to bring it. Elamai, the Torah gives me a span of time. That span of time includes Pesach, Shavuos, Sukkot. It includes approximately six months. Or a little more, seven months. That's what the Torah gives me a span of time. But the Chiyuv didn't start the morning of Pesach. The Chiyuv started when? Whenever I made the nether. So the night of Pesach is included in Baal Ta'achir, of course. When Pesach passes, and Shavuos passes, and Sukkot passes, you have been about Ta'achir. Which part of Pesach? A whole Pesach, including the night of Pesach. Lomainav Kemina. If I made a nether on the night of Pesach, in the middle of the Seder, I make a nether, I want to bring a carbon, yeah? When will my Baal Ta'achir end? Not after Sukkot. No, yeah. After the next, yeah? I have to go till the next Pesach. Because it's three full Yamam Taivim. If you learn in the Havamin of the Gemara, let's see Rashi. So Rashi. Hare Regalim. The Ktani Masnissin Leinyin Baal Ta'acher. The Kasol Kedaitach Zman Baal Ta'acher Lav Meyur Tehu. The time of Baal Ta'acher is not from the night. Kishak Kiddush Hayoim Chayel. doesn't start when you make Kiddush, when the day becomes holy. Kishak Kiddush means when the day becomes holy. Ela Achet Tovay Shashi Ruyu Lahavin Adarim and Adavas. The Angels Achet Yakriv Talmud Shal Shach Hashem Karben Kaidim Loi. You have to wait for Talmud Shal Shachar, Pesach morning. O Mishanin, and we answer, L'isuya mei karim mechayev v'koyi. L'havi karben nidre mechayev v'oymed mishah shanadar. V'hoyo lo'i lakriv v'meyere v'regel. You should have brought it before Pesach. V'loi hukvu regalm l'bal ta'achil inyan akrav as karben. Ela l'inyan mechal alei bal ta'achil. It's not that the three yamim toivim are the time I'm supposed to bring the karben. In the, you understand the svar? In the hava mene we learned what's pshat. I make a nether on Lag Boimer to bring a carbon. Okay? It comes through us. Bring your carbon. It's your yom to bring your carbon. It's a mix essay, the first yom tif. I did it. Okay. Sukkot, bring your carbon. Pesach, bring your carbon. Shvuas, Sukkot, bring your carbon. You did it? Baltach. The Chiyuv starts when? On Yom tif. So when did the Chiyuv start? By day. And for the Gemara, no. The Chiyuv doesn't start on Yom tif. The Chiyuv starts when you make a nether. That day. Elamai, it's like Lahavdal, you pay your mortgage on the first day of the month. If you don't, we give you an extension. It's called an extension. But an extension is not when the Chiv starts. So Pesach night is part of the extension. Of course I can't bring the carbon Pesach night, but Pesach night is part of the extension, meaning a whole Pesach passes, a whole Shavuos passes, a whole Sukkot passes. That's what Rashi says. Umeyur tenami chayel. At night, it's also chal. But that means that. What's For Baal Ta'acher to be chal, you need the whole Yom Tif, including the night. For Haraya, if I make a nether Pesach in the middle of the night, the first night, I'm not even a Baal Ta'acher. Why? I have to wait till the next Pesach, the first night. Because the Torah gives me the whole Yom Tif. 
So of course it starts at night. So the Shoshana Lira Golem doesn't start by day, it starts at night. It starts at night. That's the Vart. So Mele, Repapa's answer is a valid answer. Our Bar Rosh Hashanim are only Rosh Hashanahs that have a full day, 24 hour period. But that means that he's over already at night. Yes, you cannot bring it till the morning. No, you're over after Yom Tif. You're you over. This, but not, you're past due. You're past morning. due, but to be past due, you need a whole Pesach. You understand? You're not over at the night of Pesach. You're over when Yom Tif finishes. You're over with Tzoyis and Chastera. You're over. You're over Mitzvah Shmini Atzeres. When Shmini Atzeres ends, you're over. Not Mitzvah Shmini Atzeres, because you can't do anything then, but the next morning, L'chayra. You understand? Because at night you can't do anything. You're an Onus. Mitzvah Shmini Atzeres, you can't do anything. What happened is no Onus, because the Chiv is already a year old. Right, but I'm saying, when did the three Yom Tovim pass? After that, you can't be an Onus. Shmini Atzeres at night, I can't do anything. In the morning, Isru Chag in the morning, and it's a oh, Now you're over on Baltach. I'm just uh, saying. Usually they bring they brought all this Kabbalah and Achalamayit. They could bring an Achalamayit, yeah. There's a Machlaikas we learned in Beit Sef, Nedarim and Nedavis are craving by Yom Tif or not. Mm-hmm. If you say Nedarim and Nedavis are craving by Yom Tif, you could begin even the first day. If you say they're not craving by Yom Tif, then it's Chalamayin. Yeah, so when the Gemara, when the Gemara asked, day. you have to wait for the morning, either it meant the first day morning or it meant Chalamayin in the morning. Good Ha'ara, Taisva says that. Good Ha'ara. Which morning? But the point is morning, not night. So again, in the Hava, I'm in uh, your Oivar Ambal Ta'acher, Mitzah the day. In the Maskana, no. It's just the passage of the time of Yom Tif. And that passage includes the night and the day. Of course, the carbon you have to bring by day. But it's not the gate of Bal Ta'acher. You didn't solve the problem. We said that Echad Betisha is a Shoshana Yoivlis. What's Yoivlis? Yoivlis is a din. On the, on the 50th year, after 49 years, when it came Yom Kippur of that year, Bezdin had to blow Shoifer and make the year holy. That year was an interesting year. First of all, it was a sabbatical year like Shemitah. But remember, every slave went free. Every single Jewish slave went free, right? And every sale, rever- every sale of property, of real estate, or I should say almost every sale, reverted back to its owner. That's not a year. It's a year that everything is canceled out. Life starts all over again. Control, all, delete. Huh? <laughs> what? Control, all, delete. Very good. You start all over again. Everything starts over again. Yoival, jubilee. The word yoival, actually represents that it's, they blow the shaifa. When did they do it on Yom Kippur? When on Yom Kippur? The night of Yom Kippur, the day of Yom Kippur, the day of Yom Kippur. So when you say Yom Kippur, Echad Betishrei, is Rosh Hashanah for Yoivlis, it's not at night, it's by day. Yoival doesn't start at night, it starts the day of Yom Kippur when they blow shaifa. And the Kachashev, and you're mentioning it, so the Papa is proven wrong. Nobody said that uh, Sarah Betisha is... Uh... Ah, good to Shaila. It's a good to Shaila. This is a stark to Shaila. Toysfus asks it later. Davches, it was printed. Very, very good. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll address your question in one moment. Very good question. Zog the Mishnah, Zog the Gemara. Our Mishnah follows the Bishmol B'noish Rabbi Yochim Ben Broikahi. Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Yechon of Mbreke, the Omar who holds later, we're going to see a machlekes mir Rosh Hashanah Chayel Yoival. It's a big argument. When does Yoival begin Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur? He holds its Chal on Rosh Hashanah, and you don't have to blow Shofar on Yom Kippur. And when Rosh Hashanah already at night. So therefore, according you're right. If you would talk and say that it goes according to the other Tanai, Rav Papa would be a problem. But we hold like Rav Shmuel in our Mishnah, and therefore Yoival starts Rosh Hashanah, and therefore it starts at night, so there's no issue. So he asks a Gavaldik a question. How does the Gemara even have this question? Rosh Hashanah, Yoival starts on Yom Kippur. Our Mishnah said, Be'echad betishrei, Rosh Hashanah li Yoivlis. So he's asking a question, it starts on Yom Kippur. The Mishnah clearly said, it started Rosh Hashanah. It's clear. In other words, in your question, you already had your answer. Read the Mishnah, you'll see it doesn't start on Yom Kippur. That's the question Toysavis asks on the end of Ches uh, Amir Aleph. It's, 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 it's printed in the wrong place. You see the first Tais is Vare Yoivl. It's like Tais is Yeshtema. My soul could die to Chaloy mitu kmin and klal el rabbi shmol b'nei shav yoichel mabrek al kaman. There's no way to explain our Mishnah outside of the shit of rabbi shmol. You said clearly the echad b'tishrei is rishashanah liyovlus. 
It's a, it's a difficult Indian to understand. So the Rajba gives two answers for Taisvis's question, which is quite a very, very hard, very, very strong question. Answer number one he gives, Balabatish. The Gemara asked before, the Gemara said before, and Avdalad, Rabbi Nachman said, why do you say Be'echad Benissin Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim? Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim is only on Pesach, not Be'echad Benissin. So what did the Gemara answer? That Be'echad Betishrei starts the month, I must say, Be'echad Benissin starts the month when you have Rosh Hashanah L'Regalim. So he says, could be that the Gemara thought, that's maybe Peshat in the Mishnah, Be'echad Betishrei starts the month when you have Rosh Hashanah L'Yoyvel. So the Gemara says, no, by Be'echad Benissin you got no choice but to say that Peshat. By Yoyvel you say it, it goes like every small attack starts Rosh Hashanah. That's one answer he gives. Another answer he gives is, you're right. The Gemara knew now that it's following Rabbi Shmuel because Yoyvel starts Rosh Hashanah and not the Yom Kippur. But the Gemara thought, the one who asked the question thought that according to Rabbi Shmuel, even though Yoivel starts Rosh Hashanah, the main Yoivel starts after you blow Shofar Yom Kippur. And that's why he thought, if you don't count things that don't start at night, so therefore even Rosh Hashanah or Yoivel you shouldn't count. Why? Because the main Yoivel, even Rabbi Shmuel would hold that the main Yoivel starts by day and not by night. In other words, the main Yoivel sets in Yom Kippur, so therefore that was the Shaila, and then the Gemara says you're wrong, it starts with Rosh Hashanah. But I'll call upon him. According to this, the Iker Yoivel starts by Echad Betishrei, and therefore Rav Papa's answer holds strong. Zagdi Gemara Vaiter, Reb Shisha Barei de Reb Didi Yomar. Reb Shisha, the son of Reb Didi, says, Ki Chachashiv, the Tana only counts Rosh Hashanah's Midi de Loitali B'Maisa. Something that you don't have to do anything about. The time comes, the clock hits. Be'echad Benissen, boom, Rosh Hashanah. Echad betishrei, boom, Rosh Hashanah. Midi de tali b'maisa. Something that it depends on action, loike chashev. You don't have to count. Therefore, Rosh Hashanah la'oymer, Rosh Hashanah l'shtei halacha. These do not happen automatically. The heter to eat chadash is not because of the day. Today it works that way. Then the heter to eat chadash is because of the carbon. The heter to bring mincha from the new grain is not because of the day, it's because of the carbon. So therefore... The Tana doesn't mention it. So our bar Rosh Hashanah, man, what type of Rosh Hashanahs? Reb Sh- eh, Papa says you need a full day Rosh Hashanah, 24 hour. Reb Shisha says it's not about a full day, it's a Rosh Hashanah that comes automatically, not a Rosh Hashanah that's dependent on action. In other words, when you're even on Baal if you don't bring a carbon, so it only starts after you bring the Tamit Shal Shachar in the morning, which is a Maisa, V'kachashem, and you mention it. And for the Gemara, Baal Ta'achir, Memeilachayil, again, the same, the same word like before. Baal Ta'achir is not a din in the time of bringing the carbon, then you would need the Tamit Shal Shachar. It's Chal B'derech Memeilach, when the night of Yom Tov comes in, and for that you don't have to do any single Maisa. Frag the Gemara, Vare Yoivlus. Yoivl, you need a Maisa. You have to blow Shoifer. And for the Gemara, we already told you to be small. We're following the Bishmal, the son of Rabbi Yochanan, who said that it starts Rosh Hashanah at night without any Maisa. And finally, the Gemara brings a third answer. Rabashi Yama, Rabashi says. And this is an answer why the Mishnah only says, Arba Rosh Hashanim. Arba Rosh Hashanim, Shehein Ba Arba Rosh Hashanim. There are four Rosh Hashanahs, not that exist in four months, that exist in four Rosh Hashanahs. There are four Rosh Hashanahs that fall out on the first day of the month. What? Echad Benissen, Echad Be'elul, Echad Betishrei, and Echad Beshvat. I, there's more. You just said this Regolim. Why don't you mention? He's already answering also the first question. Why he doesn't say Hamisha? Besides this question of Oimer, he's answering also the first question. Not like Rav has said, it's minimum. Not like Reb Nachman by Yitzchak said, it's only four months. He's giving a whole new answer. Rosh Hashanim that are on Rosh Chodesh. That's only four. Nisan, Elul, Tishrei, and Shvat. I Oimer, that's Tezayin. I Shvuas is Vav. I Regolim is Tesvav. It's not Rosh Chodesh. Really? Excuse me, Shvat is like Bishamai, and we always paskin like Vizhilo. So why are you saying our boys just say Shlajra? Only three are Rishchaydish Nisan, Elo, and Tishrei. And for the Gemara, Hachi Kamar, this is Pshat. Our boy, Rosh Hashanim, is Taka Shlajra. Minimum, it's on three Rosh Hashanim. 
l'divrei hakel. That would be according to everybody. The echad b'shvat machlek is b'shamay b'sila. And the last one, mechad b'shvat is taka machlek. So our bar rosh hashanim heim. That's taken not according to everybody. Shloish is according to everybody. I, why does he say our bar? He says our bar because it's on four rosh hashanim. If you agree with the shit of b'sham, the Vilna Gaon has a vart here. Very geshmak of art. He says, L'chayre, this last word is a Because if he would say shloisha, you would say minimum, right? Every shama would say, he says arba. So the Vilna Gaon says, if you look in the Mishnah, you'll see that the Mishnah says this. Why? Uh, everywhere in Shas, when there's a machayit in Beshama and Besillo, you quote Beshama and you say, Divre Beshama. He says, here there's an exception. It says, Be'echad Beshvat Rishashana Le'ilam. Kid divrei beishamai. It should say beechad b'shvat rishashana leilam divrei beishamai. Beisilolam. What's kid divrei beishamai? It's uh, like the words of beishamai. So he says kid divrei beishamai goes on the beginning of the Mishnah. Arba Rosh Hashanah meim, and now he goes through the cheshbon. And when he says beechad b'shvat, kid divrei beishamai. Like the words of beishamai, it's beech. It's arba Rosh Hashanah meim. That's not divrei beishamai. You can't say on that divrei beishamai. It's Kidivre. According to Beishama, it's a Bar Rosh Hashanah man. Beishelel argues. Beishelel says it's not a Bar Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because to be Shvat is not a Rosh Hashanah. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.